being here at the Word is Right. I'm so excited to be here this evening in a minute and a half. My oven is going to beep and I will have to depart for just a quick minute while we do that. Uh, awesome. So the, this looks this looks really, really good. I'm going to save that password just because it prompted me to do so. And I don't have the best memory. So awesome. Awesome. Welcome to the word is right. Uh, tonight, this is our Saturday night double feature open mic event. We have our very own Jeff Taylor in the house all the way from Malton outside Boston. And uh, we have Namu all the way from Australia. Uh, so super, super excited to have everyone here today. If you would would like to read uh please drop your name in the chat or send me a personal direct message and i will get you jeff taylor i mean <laughs> Joe Cottrell, i got you uh ed poetastic uh raja got you the poet raja's in the house tonight let's go now all jeff's all jeff's look the same actually jet jeff you apparently look like uh, we should do we should totally do a skit on how to recognize jeff cottrell in public um like i don't know a, a bob a bob would be a more generic right a bob uh i don't know we should we we need to totally do a skit uh let's go stacy dyson is going to uh work today which means she expects to get paid so y'all don't forget that dane william washington i got you wow uh, mark states i got you let's go ah there is my uh bloodthirsty oven that screams at me defiantly when she wants to oh, i'm just gonna turn that off all right, so at least I don't burn the fucking bread. All right, let's go. Uh, fabulous. We've got Jeff Cottrell, Eddie Poet, Ed Poetastic, Raja, Stacy, Dane, William Washington, and Mark States. If I missed anyone, please let me know, and I will add you to the open mic list tonight. Uh, it's a nice full room, uh, but there's not a lot of people on the open mic list, so here's what we will do. Uh, we'll have about five minutes on this open mic list. And in fact, let me close out some unused apps because they're probably just draining battery, battery, I don't know, like the function of my Chromebook here. There we go. Am I, am I, did I freeze my back? Okay. I don't know. This is all new since Chrome has updated the Zoom. It's supposed to be better, right? It's supposed to be like a vibrator is better than a dick, but I'm still waiting for that to happen. All right. Uh, so five minutes on the open mic list. Uh, f features, we'll go, let's see, we'll probably we'll go about 20 minutes. We'll bring up our first feature. I, I tend to go with whoever's in the room first, but uh, being that Namu is in Australia, uh, I don't, I think it's like morning time where she's from. Are you on a time uh, restriction at all, Namu? Um, ish, but not okay. really, kind of a little bit. Um, I kind of have time. I should, I should have like until maybe 10 o'clock my time. So that's like another 45. Is that, is that kind of okay, when it was so, so we can, what we'll do is we'll, so Jeff, if you're, if you're amiable to it, we'll have Namu be the first feature so she can go and finish with what she needs to do. And then, uh, so we'll go about 20 minutes uh, here on the 15, 20 minutes on the open mic list. We'll bring Namu up. She's got a 20 minute feature set. It's exciting. Cause you get to hear a full 20 minute set from this woman. Oh my God, let's go. And then uh, we'll go back to the open mic list for 15, 20 minutes. So we'll bring up our second feature, Jeff Taylor, and then we'll go back and finish up the open mic list. So anyone who didn't get a chance to read, who wants to read, uh, you're welcome to read Douglas. Welcome. Welcome Douglas. So excited to have you. All right. Uh, so before we begin today, a bunch of things are happening here at The Word is Right. Uh, we just had a fun uh, team meeting. I'm so excited to bring you all of the new shows for uh, The Word is Right. We have um, Jane Spoken Word. Lady Jane is going to be here the second and fourth Tuesday night doing a very interesting show. It's not like anything that is out there in the um, poetry community right now. And then on Thursdays, 
toggling first and third and second and fourth Tuesdays, we have Arsen, the poet, doing an open mic. Uh, and we also have Matt Wall uh, doing Poetic Anarchy with Matt Wall. And that's uh, an open mic with a feature reader as well. So we're, we're very excited to have all these poets here. Uh, and <laughs> just get it. This is behind the scenes. This is real life, y'all. We're real people. This is real life. Let me just pull this this pan out the oven oh my god all right that's the last thing i swear to god that's the last thing today uh have nothing else in the oven all right let's go we're poeting but we gotta feed our bodies right we gotta gotta feed our bodies it's super bowl sunday tomorrow so Let's go. Uh, I'm also very excited that Terry Rose Jerkson is going to be taking over the last Saturday of the month starting in April. She's going to be hosting karaoke night. And we have Brandy Downs uh, coming to The Word is Right soon uh, to be doing a very interesting kink talk uh, about erotica, kink fetish, lifestyle, questions and answers. A lot of really great uh, dialogue and discussion uh, for that show. All right, so those are some new things that are coming up. If you'd like to be on the mailing list, the email list, let us know. We'd be happy to put you on the emailing list uh, because Shockey G puts out a monthly newsletter with all of this pertinent information. You can find us at always uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. If you've not had a chance to go check out the YouTube channel, please do so. And uh, let's go. I'm going to open up the mic because I don't want anyone to get on a cold mic. This is a fairly new poem, really short. Here we go. I am a tree house because I am an unnatural home that tends to shelter broken men who long for their childhood back. I am a tree house because I have been chopped down, reworked, repurposed, recycled to realize my old life did not make sense while so many were homeless and I was still so empty. I have a floor and walls and pretend windows, a roof that is barely shade, a ladder to climb so be ready to do the work, a levee lift to raise up blessings, some carpet, some drapes, a makeshift broom for the messes we make. The only perfect time to be inside me is never because the nights are cold and my days are hot and weather is, well, it's New Mexico. Many creatures create their place here too. So be ready to share with what you can't see. I am a tree house because I was built for happiness. Dreams, the idea that one day we will write ourselves free. All right, thank you all so very much. Let's get going tonight. Oh, let's go, let's go. Yes, feel free to unmute yourselves after performances. That is absolutely, totally fine. First up tonight, I got Jeff Cottrell followed by Eddie and the Raja. And then Stacey, you'll have to let me know if you are content with going before or after Namu. And uh, we, will, uh, we will rock the first feature then. Are you ready, Jeff? Yeah. So the last time I was here, I didn't get to finish my story because we didn't do a, get to do a second round. So my origin story for Brick and Dummerton. So when I left you, so they were doing, Brick and Dummerton were doing a live show with James Lipton uh, talking about their oranges. And Brick was talking, or origins, not oranges. Brick was talking, was talking about when he was with his uh, agent and his agent was telling him, well, his act wasn't totally perfect. And then suddenly an intern came in. <clears throat> so I start pleading my case to the agent when suddenly I hear the door of the office open and behind me. Well, it's about time, the agent yells above my head. Don't you get it, kid? When I say step on it, I mean step on it. No delays. I toins around and sees the kid holding the coffee. He's this big fat kid who looks dumber than a box of rocks in a turlet bowl. I'm sorry, Mr. Hinkelmeyer, the kid says in this high voice. Don't get sore, see? It'll never happen again. You bet your ass it won't, the agent says. 
I swear, you're the stupidest intern we've ever had. And the fat kid says, I'm sorry, again. And he steps forward, but then he trips over his own feet and falls on the doggone floor. And a cup of coffee flies in the air and smacks the agent on the head, splashing the steaming hot coffee all over his face. And the agent screams at the top of his lungs in agonizing pain. And the kid just shrugs and says, oopsie doopsie, Mac, I done it again. Oh, called Dummerton, interrupting Brick's story, and he shot his hand up in the air. Oh, can I guess who the intern was, Brick? I bet I knows who the intern was. Some of the audience laughed, and Brick sighed. Ah, oh, for the sake of Pete, he groaned. Was it Moiv Griffin, Brick? I bet it was Moiv Griffin, said Dummerton. Or maybe it was Meryl Streep. Was it Meryl Streep, Brick? Will you shut up and let me tell the story, you nimrod, growled Brick, smacking Dummerton again. The crowd roared with laughter and applause. So anyways, Brick went on, Mr. Hinkelmeyer is still screaming his full lungs out, going, ah, get me a doctor, and all that. And I gets real mad, because I'm worried this stupid kid just loused up my big chance to score with the agent. And I toys to him, and I smacks him hard in the face. Idiot, I yells at him, what's the matter with you? Ow, he screams, that hoist's real bad, mister. Why'd you do a thing like that? What kind of dope gets to cough gets coffee on another fella, I says. And he looks at me funny and he goes, huh? What do you mean? I ain't coughing on nobody. I ain't even sick. And even if I was, I wouldn't spread no joints by coughing on another fella. Not coughing, you palooka, I says. I ain't talking about no coughing. Well, I certainly hopes not, the kid says, because I ain't dead yet and neither is you. So what would we need a coffin for, huh? I ain't ready for no coffin. What are you so morbid for anyways? I shakes my fist at the moron and says, why I honor. And I'm about to lay into the fella when I gets interrupted by a strange sound. <coughs> it was laughter. Both the kid and I look at Mr. Hinkelmeyer, who's pointing at us and laughing like a maniac with a couple screws loose. It was clear that the hot coffee was still scalding him horribly, but he's forgot all about that because he's laughing so hard at us. And I says to Mr. Hinkelmeyer, what's wrong with you anyways? And the agent catches his breath and he goes, my God, I've never seen anything so funny. Such brilliant wordplay, such natural chemistry. Then he lights up like he's got a big idea or something. And he says, how would you like me to team the two of you together? We can sell out venues across the country with an act like that. And I says, you pulling my leg, pal? Forget it. I ain't teaming up with this screwball. And the kid looks confused again. And he looks around the room and goes, what screwball, Mac? I don't see no screwball. Are you seeing things? I guess you needs a doctor too. And then he opens the office door and calls out, say, is there a doctor in the house? Mr. Hinkelmeyer falls over laughing again and says, enough, enough. I'll get you signed up on a contract right away. And then I really do need a doctor for these burns, I'm afraid. And that's the whole story, Brick concluded, holding out his arms. The Lincoln Center apl audience applauded wildly. But Brick, said Dummerton with a baffled expression, there's something I still don't understand, Brick. Brick smacked his own forehead. What? What is it you don't understand? Brick, who was the intern? Was it Gary Cooper? I bet it was Gary Cooper. Brick shook his fist at Dummerton again. What a nincompoop, he muttered. If you hadn't saved my career, why, I'd slam your face into a porcupine and then spit on you. Sheesh, what a grouch you are, Brick. Ah, shut up, said Brick, amidst more audience laughter and applause. So that was that was the origin story for Brick and Dummerton. Uh, I have a Zoom feature coming up on the 19th at an Australian-friendly time, come to think of it. It's 8.30 a.m. EST, 6.30 a.m. New Mexico. So if Marissa wants to come, she has to get up early. But I'll put the Facebook uh, thingy in the chat and some other fun stuff. I'm totally okay with getting up early. You know, it's just, is there coffee and other things early? <laughs> I, I, I use Red Bull. I use Red Bull. I just don't have a taste. Never got a taste. I don't know. I don't do too much caffeine like that. Um, yeah. Mm, we'll see. But uh, send me the link and all the information. If I can go, I'll totally go. If it's, if I don't have to get, if, if it's a day off for me, it's easier. Uh, and if it's early, like before I have to take kids to school, that's okay too. All right, let's go. Yeah, Jeff Cottrell, I've been missing you. 
I'm so glad you came to read um, that. Let's go. All right. Uh, Eddie, poetastic Eddie the Fireman Foreman. He is my co-host, co-hostess with the mostest on the our movie nights, which is the first Saturday of the month, poetry and uh, open mic. Uh, poetry and a movie open mic. It's so much fun. Um, this last uh, weekend we did uh, Poetic Justice with Janet Jackson and Tupac. It was awesome. It was like it, I try to pick things from when I was growing up because so many of the millennials and the younger people have never seen it. And then they're like, wow, this is so great. Uh, so let's let's go. And then uh, he also is my co-host on Moist Mondays on the fourth Monday of the month. So we're super excited to have him. All right. After Eddie, we'll bring up Raja and then we'll see where we're at for time for Namu. Sure. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love our wonderful, 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 stupendous Zoom nights. I feel with such so many vivid and wonderful delights. Thank you for sharing the spotlight. All right, my name is Ed Potastico. I'm feeling fantastic. Please give me time to control my rhyme for all those sublime. I got two pieces, so you know, go rhyme. My first chime is called um, Iron Rocket. The early bird is flying in the colorful sky. See, up early, what happened to my coffee? My chocolate decaf of anti misery. Where's my expensive liquid toffee? I'm daydreaming of an exotic commercial. My eyes were glued to the bowl of cereal. The headaches of the global traversal. Look at me, the stuffy, cranky, and joyful turtle. A piece of paper dancing around my pocket. My electric muses sing in my ear. I'm waiting for my speedy rocket. The trip far away from boredom and fears. My fingers dance around my jacket. My body with his gnawing habit. My legs jump higher than any jet, grasshopper or rabbit. I'm mumbling, is this it? Is this it or is this it? I finally found my golden ticket. I was almost at my limit. My rock is coming in 15 minutes. The feeling of paying for something, but never visit. Here it comes, the smoky rocket coming for a landing. My footsteps are slowly advancing. My rock is panting while the door started branching. The rocket looked modern and enchanting. I gave my paper in the ticket collector's hand. I felt I was about to burst, but he understand. My trip to the bathroom wasn't planned. You gotta go if you gotta go. Everyone can understand. Yeah, you don't want to hear the details. We're all males and females. Let's just say I prevail on my trail. Let's just say I calm my angry wail. The floor started moving and rocket started singing. I started grinning, thinking, and sitting. I started thinking what I was missing. My ideas started swimming and swimming. Oh, my luggage, wait. They're, top, they're over my head. If I didn't remember, I would be so dead. My body felt like lumber or lead. I ordered a meal of beef and noodles with a beer. It left me in joyful tears. My fingers were wrestling with a silver spear. I yarn, the drowniness is here. I asked for a fluffy marshmallow to help me dream. I asked for a blindfold to submerge in the steam. I asked for earplugs for the sounds, toots, and screams. All right, time to sleep in the supreme. I wake into a quiet sight. I left the rocket at midnight. I waved and saw my Uber lights. I'm racing off to a hotel for another sleeping sight. Thank you. But I have one more. Well, you, well like she said, I'm your the co-host of Moist Mondays. So you've been warned forevermore. This is spicy pea to say the least. This is called um, Jungle Love. The lion was hungry for a touch. He slowly crawled in the bedroom. The fire of desire was too much. He slowly waltzes in the soft lagoon. His claws slowly traced up and down without end, slowly stimulated her bittersweet texture. He started to rub, suck, and grasp and kiss again. She, she was enveloped by state, sta I'm sorry. She was enveloped by a state of pleasure. Her curvy naked body leans forward, her creamy bosom fall into his hands. He gently massaged with lewd words, the groan song sung throughout the lands. Her back arches while her pink walls tighten with ecstasy. His hardness is strengthened by a boiling lust. Their eyes peer into bare seas to feed their sanity. Their thoughts and ideas start to turn to dust. Her body dances like a graceful tree. 
Her body dances, dances in a wide, in a wind of soft fluid motion. Both smile with wild glee, both lost in the steamy erosion of their sexual devotion. The inner render was all over the place. Their blurry eyes were lost in many positions. Their bodies nestled in a musty gray smeared across their face. Both were consumed by deep sensational satisfaction. The, the feeding of pleasure is covering sweaty sparks. Deep roars vibrate inside their chests. Their fireflies were dancing inside their hearts. They started to squeeze, pinch, flick, lick, and caress. The stimulated pleasure was too great. The bodies were moving in a rampant stampede. The moist state of their lake they quickly create. The, the instinct a tune of greed to passionately breed. Her body stood on top of, of hard mass. Their claws gripped with so much might. Their wire hearts burning and beat so fast. Both wanted their erotic suns to ignite. The moonlight spread across their flesh. The surreal sensations running inside their loins. The tingly incitement of sexual progress. They, could, they quickly went in, out, and join and rejoin. The sexual high was reaching its peak. The sexual release soared in the sky. The lures were about to leak. The rushing energy couldn't simply be compared. The boiling satisfaction rampaged inside their brains. Their nerves are experiencing a deep high. The sexual high was hard to maintain. Their minds were lost in the crimson sky. Their fire spasms all throughout their skin. Bodies were motionless, sorry, bodies were in a motionless daze. The deep moans started to transcend. The bedroom transformed to a sweaty maze. The two lions are sleeping in the fluffy jungle. The sunrise on the horizon. The sound of snoozing and a bundle of mumbles. Bodies trying to hide from the grazing sun. Thank you. Let's go. Y'all <laughs> unmute your mics. Give it up for Ed Potastic tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. And now we all feel fantastic. Eddie. Yeah. Woo. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I love it. Let's go. All right. Next up, we got the poet, Raja. Uh, and then we'll, I'm looking at the time. I'm thinking we'll probably, well, let's break. After Raja, we'll bring up our first feature. Uh, Namu, and that um, will be Namu. Namu. Hmm? And then, uh, and then we'll go back to the open mic list. I have Stacey Dyson, Dane Ince, William Washington, Mark States. If I missed anyone you want to read, let me know. All right, Raja, you got the floor. Solid. I have two pieces tonight. I cannot keep fighting a war on two fronts, yet I know, I know you have no intention to sue for peace. So again, I choose to abandon all other engagements that you would not be allowed to raise my lands to the ground. I will direct all of my forces towards you, and this time I will not be satisfied to just drive you out. This time I will attack you with fury, the fury of, of having spent decades fighting you. My entire, entire army has been given the clear command that they are to deny your men quarter and give no mercy. Let us see how great you are without an army, or rather let us see how quickly you run and hide. I have devoted too much of my life to someone who refers to me as their nemesis. I have long grown weary of this back and forth of ours, so then let me put an end to it permanently. This time I will not stop until all of your men are in the ground and my hands are stained red with your blood. And then this is my second piece. I am tired of always deferring to you alone do not hold the power should not have a place here. We should not be, we should only be trying to define peace has always been hard for us to find it within yourself to choose against. Violence can be the only answer for so long have we stood here willing to fight the other futures are possible if we could find common ground yourself knowing I will never choose to leave your chaos behind as it is only caused Misery is our legacy unless we stop this unending. War has ruined this place and has left it in disarray, abounds as our conflict begins. Again, I must ask, is beating me worth all of this history of violence between us must come to an end? This deluded quest of yours to seize full control of this land cannot be taken by force, must eventually give way to reason has failed. If you believe I am seeking your defeat, the demons that seduced you with their lies have eroded a partnership once built on 
trust cannot exist on the blood stained field of battle your baser instincts that once again we may talk with me as we used to so that I may see your side by side is the way we were meant to oversee this place your hope once again in a shared future thank you let's go you guys unmute your mics give it up for Raja please Woo. thank you if you're not following him, please do so. The poet underscore Raja, R-J-A-H. Feel free to drop your links in the chat. Follow each other, please. Uh, that is how we continue to grow. Uh, that is how we continue to network, uh, fight for change, all of that great stuff. And of course, here we go. Uh, we're welcoming up our first feature this evening, Namu from Australia, because uh, she's amazing. And we just love her. Tesoro women in the house. Let's go. Uh, so, yes, I'm so excited that you are here. And I've been thinking about who to pair with Jeff Taylor for a while. And I was like, oh, my God, Namu would be perfect. Let's go. Um, so I'm going to read you her bio. Her bio and her handles you can also find on our Word is Right Facebook page. Uh, you can go to Click Events. Uh, if you're watching this past today, you would go to Past Events and you'll find it. Click the event. Uh, descriptions has Jeff's picture and bio, Namu's picture and bio, and all of their handles as well. Uh, here we go. Namu is just one human trying to find peace. She uses her poetry and other creative outlets and hopes to help herself to find and others to find their own level of peace, whatever that might look like. Namu has featured her poetry in her local communities in Perth, Western Australia, as well as nationally in Australia and <laughs> internationally in Zoom rooms around the world. She hopes to one day have the opportunity to present her poetry in person around the world. We would love that. Fun facts about Namu. I'm only going to read like a couple of them because there's a lot on here. So you have to go to the Facebook page to read the rest of them. Number one, Namu has 34 letters in her full name, nine of which make up her first name and the remaining 25 make up her four other names. <laughs> Number two, Namu loves everything creative. Dance was her first love, but poetry, drawing, making things, singing, or mostly anything that breathes creativity has always been a part of her life that has brought her the most joy. <laughs> Number three, Namu hails and adores her one and only God, Mickey Mouse. And number four, Namu is half human, half horse or as it's most commonly known as Sagittarius. If you wanna read five and six, you gotta to go to the Facebook page uh, to finish reading. You can find her on Instagram at I go by Namu, I-G-O-B-Y-N-A-M-U and her PayPal is N-A-M-U-G-E-E-R-E. Y'all unmute your mics, give a warm welcome to our first feature this evening, Namu. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Let's go, Tesoro. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, I need to just say before I start, I've been in a bit of a um, what do I call this? A writing rut. <laughs> I've gone been going through other things. So I've only done a couple of new ones. So I'm going to be pairing it with a few old ones. So I'm sorry if you've heard it before. But yeah, let's see how this goes. I think I've I've made up about um, 20 minutes, so this should be good. I have one that I wanted to share a photo with. Is that possible or like share my screen? Um, absolutely. It is multiple participants right now. So you, yeah, whenever you're ready, just click share screen. Okay, I'll do that. I think that's a little bit down the road, but that's probably my last one. So that's fine. Okay, um, so I did an intro uh poem about myself because I never really gave people an insight of who I am and um my circumstances have changed a little bit if that's what I'm talking about in this story but it's still kind of relevant so I thought I'd do this one okay this one is called how do you do from me to you <clears throat> I like collecting mugs I don't know why I probably own 10 more mugs than one person alone should own, but I just like the way they look. I like their sweet designs. I like they make me smile even after I've refilled my tea 10 times. See, I'm a creature of habit, a repetition. 
of obsession. I think this grew from a lifetime of chaotic misguided suppression, into family oppression that left less answered questioned questions. So I crafted my own normal, my own structured consistent direction. In saying that, for most of my life, I've had no clue what I'm doing, not sure what I'm pursuing while simultaneously internally brewing for something bigger to achieve things quicker to just be comfortable in my own figure. So I did what made most sense and assigned an intracranial digger. I sent her in to find out what the fuck is going on. I don't know what she's doing, but I know she's doing it wrong. My mind doesn't stop racing. It's either confusion, boredom or doubt. It's more like she jumped on a hamster wheel with a joint and a drink, then trip stumbled off and passed out. I would love to have direction. In fact, I would love to be given a map. In fact, if nothing else, I would love for someone to explain how to deal with that idiot at work who is crap. Ugh, the idea of working in an office for much longer makes me want to lick a dead dog's asshole. I know. No. So I always seem to be coming up with my next business idea. But then my fear says, surprise, I've been watching you the whole time. It's fun how you're trying to try something new and I'm sure it would work, except I'm positive your idea sucks and no one will actually give a fuck. What you want to do is nothing, just bail. That way there's no chance that you'll ever fail. One time when fear said this, I punched it in the nose. And when it did, it sent tingles through my fingers, legs and toes. I then did it a second time because I am an idiot, because it stood right up and then backhanded me, and since then I haven't been able to get rid of it. I'm socially a weirdo, but I use humour as a decoy. I'm naturally an introvert, which to be honest, I enjoy. I'm sexually a geek in that I'm an A-plus honours student. I've been described as a study freak and have always felt lots of practical experience was prudent. I love eating good food. I love most anything that's sweet. And whilst touch may be my love language, just don't touch me when I eat. When I feast, I am a beast, kind of like a bear. I think Joey from Friends said it best when he said, Joey doesn't share. I get easily distracted, procrastinating excessively. And I also have a severe case of minor OCD. My time management is terrible. <laughs> that's one thing I'll admit. And I'm not emotional. I'm just supremely allergic to fakery and bullshit. So I have this weird fear of people, if people stand too close behind me. I think this came from something that happened as a tiny little girl. I was exposed to adult things just far too soon. That changed the grain of my internal waves to my radio frequency tune. I grew attuned to worthlessness. I learned to cocoon in a, in a distress. I became so immune to my value in life that a <laughs> no became yes. To avoid all the stress, I guess, I just didn't want the mess of having to stand up to a bully and all their different forms of cruelty. I feel like a burden in every room. I feel like I'm always getting it wrong. Fear and anxiety eat me for breakfast and all I truly want is to belong. I feel lonely in a crowd. I don't really speak that loud. I don't really know my father, but being my mother's daughter makes me so proud. Other than that, I'm just normal, I guess, just as normal as normal can be. Well, there might be some more about how normal I am, but for now, that's enough about me. Thank you. Whew, let's okay. go, Nami. <laughs> so my second one um, is a part of a series, and I've always been really scared about doing this if it's it's recorded. But... I'm going to try <laughs> anyway, because this series, I feel like is one of my strongest series. So this one is going to be the first one in the series. It's called Nothing Can Be Done. I'm sorry is all one can say when I'm finished telling, telling my tale. No mountain shift, no justice police, no one getting carted off to jail. It's okay. I comfort them knowing full well that's not true. An uncomfortable tension consumes their face. It's not like it was you. I'm sorry. I hear them say again. I see their emotions get confused. Honestly, it's okay. There's nothing anyone can really do. What? I hear them snap at me as their confusion turns to fury, as if this wouldn't be open and shut if it was presented to any jury. Dejection mixed with acceptance is the cocktail of my mind as I attempt to explain the reality, censoring the brutal with something a bit more kind. 
Okay, I chuckle warmly. Let me pose it more like this. I warn you in advance though, this won't end up in bliss. Imagine there's two puppies, one named Freckle and the other Pepper. They would play and talk and fight and do virtually everything together. Pepper was a show off, a bitch described more than, sorry, Freckle was a show off, a bitch described more than just her gender, whilst Pepper was more quiet, far more approachable and more tender. Now imagine that one day Freckle discovered a newfound source of joy. It was a puppy that looked just like her, but as a fluffy little toy. So when Freckle was with others, she would often split her time with playing with this newfound toy or just leaving it behind. But when Freckle was at home and had this toy alone, not even Peppa was invited into their special playtime zone. So in reality, these puppies are sisters. I mean, that's really not hard to see. But now imagine that that fluffy little toy was actually me and replace special playtime with tormenting a little girl and maybe that'll give you a tiny glimpse into my adolescent world. A world that taught me how to hide, how to cry and to be shy. A world that taught me to hate my skin, hate my, hate my grin and myself from deep within. A world that would taunt and remind me relentlessly for fun, saying, you must always love your family, you only have the one. A world that demonstrated the cruel could administrate your fate because they're masters in their craft to control and manipulate. The manipulation was so sly, it was disturbingly intellectual, smudging love with degrading shame as it crossed that line to non-consensual. An environment that assured me love would be full and warm like soul food, but only if I could ensure I didn't trigger on her bad mood, which could be if I chewed or wore the wrong outfit with my shoes. I mean, it would be easier for me to make a list of things it didn't bloody include. But most importantly, a world that broke me when I finally told someone and they said, oh, my darling, she was young. So now there's nothing that can be done. Nothing can be done. Nothing can be done. Always love your family and nothing can be done. I've had to really find my peace because nothing can be done. I've really had to find my peace. So that's what I have done. Oops, I think I crossed the line from kind of brutal on that one. I'm sorry is all one can say when I'm fin finished telling my tale. No mountain shift, no justice police, no one getting carted off to jail. It's okay. I comfort them, knowing full well that's not true. An uncomfortable tension consumes their face. It's not like it was you. I'm sorry, I hear them say again. I see their emotions get confused. Honestly, it's okay. There's nothing anyone can really do. Thank you. Um, okay, next one. Okay, so this next one is one of my newer ones. Um, I don't have a title for it, I don't think. I don't think I have a title for it, but it's a fun little weird one that I just kind of came up with quite quickly. Okay. Today, I am going to be a mess, I confessed. As I stood there partway dressed, looking at the drops of blood I hadn't wanted but should have guessed were going to bless me on this day, I really didn't want to play because every single other day preceding leading to today without being dramatic, let's just say, had been less and less appealing. Beaming, he said, okay. I said, okay. He said, okay. And for a moment, I broke form, my concrete fundamental norm that rips my inner whole case out as I step into the storm that is my hormones. Okay, I said again, cautiously but questioning. Surely he misunderstood the mess I was intending to portray. I mean, really, today was not the day that he and my mess suddenly were besties and just got along okay. So I looked at him and squinted as my eyes turned into laser beams of judgment and I scanned him head to toe thinking, what kind of sick, twisted alien life form was invading my man's mind? And he said, whoa, I know what you are thinking. I haven't been invaded. My mind has not succumbed or been persuaded by some magic alien life form whose only mission left in life, though twisted and outdated, is to make me think the only way that I'll get through the next few days is just comply and not okay to everything you want and say in the hope that maybe it will fend off being berated or hated. And possibly if all goes well, that in the end, I'll get to see you naked. <laughs> Shaken 
I stood still, trying to fight the will to not release the jaded part of me that wants to just scream, really, as my hormones start to shudder and then think, oh, man friend thinks he's funny, and then goes off to make a plan on how to kill him. Grim, I know. Justified, I would say so. I mean, how did he know word for word what I was thinking with that alien life form, though? In my head, it made sense. But when he said it back to me, it sounded way more crazy. I mean, oh. I looked at him and softened as my ego stroked my head. Today, I'm going to be a mess, I confessed. Then he smiled at me warmly. Okay, once more, he said. Thank you. Um, okay, 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 okay. This next one, um, again, is another new one. Um, and it's something that I just keep repeating to myself because I think I just need to hear it for some reason. I hope the message gets across, but it's called, Can You Please Sit Down? I am the director of my own destruction. I am the lighthouse keeper leading me out to sea. Knowing all too well that if I only shone the spotlight right, I could lead myself to some way safe and still the jitted part of me that can't quite grasp the anger of recovery. I'm not ready, I keep saying, and saying, and saying I'm not ready somehow sheds me from the momentary burden of response to my ability, enhancing my fragility as I ache to take responsibility of knowing that no one else is going to change my life but me. And I'm not ready to take ownership of everything I know that I could be. But why am I not ready? Why can I not see that I am more than just the fear that has engorged itself and forged itself to mimic iron bars and shackles fixed to iron weights prepared to arbitrage the only part of me that says with pride, I don't give a fuck when people tell me that I'm not worth it, the only part that hasn't given up. I am the director of my own destruction, but I don't want to be. I just want fear to sit down so that I can finally see. Thank you. Um okay. <laughs> um okay. Okay, um this one is also a part of that series. This is the fifth one in that series, and it is called August. This August is the first August I've had to lie to you. I tried to reassure myself this day was like the others, but time finally cracked and peeled the seam back on that bumper sticker, love is all you need, pitch, as if love is like the seamstress who can sew up all the real shit that you feel inside that whole body quivering feeling that leaves your goosebumps shivering, leading to swatting it aside and shooing it away as it sticks to you like a fly on heat that's yelling at you, hey! I was thinking that today you let me spill the tea on all the bullshit. Are you listening? Are you listening? She's not She's not listening to me. Fly, fly, go away. But then one day I listened to the fly. I peered into that whole body feeling. I snipped the stitches of love's patchwork just to let the truth unfold. And as time cracked under pressure of hiding history, it revealed reluctantly that Actually, love can't make it all better. I wonder if you thought if history would have outrun you. Maybe you just hoped my naive innocence would do to serve as frosting on the glass door that housed the damage you have caused. I shudder at the thought at all the times you self applaud yourself. This August is the first August I've had to lie, it's true. To you, I wore a smile to compliment my outfit. But when I told you happy birthday, I didn't mean it. Thank you. I'm just checking um, how much time I have left. I'm just, I've tried to structure it, but I just want to make sure I've got enough. You have, I mean, roughly five or six more minutes, but you know, feel free if you want to take a few extra, it's fine. I think I've yeah got about five five and a half is what I've got so cool awesome 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 um, okay 
<laughs> so this next one is called addressing the boardroom. Okay. Oh, I do, I know this, I heard her say again. Really, I said sarcastically, quickly realizing where I am, trying to swallow my tone and saying, well, won't you tell us then? Yeah, the answer is it's December. Can you expand on that a bit? Yeah, December is the month that you don't have to give a shit. I stare at her with gritted teeth slowly imploding from within. She stares right back with my twitching eye with a beaming fucking grin. Yeah, thanks for that, Priscilla. Your input's always just top class. Swear to God, if she speaks again, I'll put my foot up her fucking asking lots of questions is something I do every single day. But addressing this same boardroom is a game I've had to learn to play. There's quite a lot of members on this table back and front. Not that I hear from most of them because Priscilla is uh, blunt and loud and obnoxious and so proud and no one's bloody told her that her outbursts aren't allowed. I know, I know, as chairman, this really is my fight. But she is really loud. Complaints cause tension and dang nabbit, sometimes she's right. Every day I brace myself for Priscilla, queen of the desk, backed up by her followers, which is the majority of the rest. This has been the way virtually every single day. But then something changed when a new member came to play. Welcome to the team, I said. We're so glad to have you. Why don't we go around the room and explain what role we do? Each member stood and said their name and explained what role they play. But as it came around to Priscilla, my thought was, please don't scare this one away. Hi, my name's Priscilla. I manage procrastination and I'm the captain. So if you have a bright idea, <laughs> I'll tell you 10 reasons why it shouldn't happen. Head in hand, I shake my head, murmuring every fucking orientation. But to my surprise, the new member stood unfazed and said, hi, I'll be managing motivation. Every day, the simplest task would be something that I dread. But now I, might, I find it much more fun addressing the boardroom in my head. Thank you. Okay, last one. Um, this one I wanted to share my screen. Um, Make sure I'm sharing the right thing. Um, do I have to have it up? I do not do this often. Is this obvious? Um, Oh, there it is. Okay. Can you guys see that? Awesome. Almost. Still, still coming. Still a little dark. Still coming. Still coming? No, it's so. It's, oh, here it is. It's on the screen now. Perfect. Oh, it's cutting in and out a bit. Is that me? It's like flashing for me. Maybe that's not a good idea. <laughs> Oh no! It's it's, oh, it's good it. it's good enough now, Mo. Yeah. Just, okay. Just go ahead and share with what you're going to do with it. Okay. Um, I'm going to be referring to the actual thing, so I'll, I'll try and use the mouse and see if you guys can see it. Okay. Okay. People keep asking me, "Why do you close your eyes? Hold your breath for just three seconds." Let the room dissolve and give control to all the toxic mess you live in. Aren't you surrounded by this hardness? Develop shadows in your glow. What we see of you is beautiful. Why can't you see that and just let go of all the rest? Don't recede into the mess that plagues your mind. You might just find, if you're more lively, vocal, vibrant, you know, social, people might not think you're so mysteriously unapproachable. A ripple tickles the gap between my lips collides with my amusement and spills a chuckle out as they bump briefly and trip. And as it settles as a smirk on my lower right cheek joint, I smile and then say gently, I think you're just missing the point. This is intentional, I exclaim, not trying to hide the pride in my ability to recognize the worth I'd always set aside. 
other than my face that I've aligned by design to match a framework of acceptance society has defined? Is there nothing else that you see when you really stop and take the time to just look at me? Like, do you see the sock that cradled my small foot as it carved my line through trauma and all the courage that that took? Do you see the bird that's flying in the sky or maybe it's a person with a scarf wrapped around their neck put there to guide me? Don't deny that you don't see those three figures, one, two, three, that epitomize the symbolizing growth through my adversity. I won't say that my cloak doesn't choke my breath at times when the shadows of my darkest moments make me beg the question, will I ever just be fine? Can't you see me for more than what you see? There is power in the muted silence in the presence of my being because courage doesn't have to be loud, I said. Being lively and more social won't dull down the voices in your head when you're still and alone and the chill reaches your bones. Sometimes you have to find the balance in the chaos of your own world. Some people get it, but some others don't. And hey, that's okay. I'm not here to be in service of them. So to those people, I say, I don't need your approval. More so the removal of your presence and the essence of your energy. Because respectfully, your opinion doesn't warrant anything from me but pity. I mean, your shitty outlook seems to say a lot more about you than it does about me. And then I close my eyes, hold my breath for just three seconds, let the room dissolve and then let go of all the toxic mess they bring in. I can't control if they don't see the little things that make up me because I've finally found some balance in the chaos of my beauty. Thank you. That was my last one. Oh my God, you guys, unmute your mics, please. Give it up for our fierce feature reader today, Namu. Oh, Good work, yeah. Good work. Good work. Let's go. Woo. Thank you. Yes, and in fact, I have, I had it pulled up. Um, so if you're interested, you know, usually when we do these open mic events, if they're not um, a ticketed event, we do oftentimes, Oh, it's not gonna let me go to it. All right, hang on one sec. Uh, we have the hat going around, right? And, and we ask everyone in the room if they could uh, drop a couple bucks in the hat for the featured reader this evening in lieu of a ticketed uh, price. There's 14 people in the room currently. There were 16 here just a moment ago. So if you would be so kind and put a couple bucks, two, three, four dollars, it you know it doesn't have to be everything. But all of us doing a little bit is a lot. Uh, buy her a gallon of gas, buy her a cup of coffee, um, or a, a couple um, liters of gas. <laughs> she needs a liter of soda. Uh, those of you who are Super Troopers fans will appreciate that. She just wants a goddamn liter of soda. Yes, uh, please buy her, uh, buy her something. Uh, don't just do nothing. And if you were like, well, I'm not going to drop $3 in the hat because I'm fucking cheap. You're fucking wrong. Because if everyone who actually said that did that, uh, it would be a, a big different story for all of the artists out there. Her PayPal is N A M U G. E-E-R-E. -E. If you do not have PayPal, you have Cash App, Venmo, something else, uh, you want to send a check in the mail, that's totally fine. Bring it. You can send it to me and I will send her the PayPal, uh, whatever. It does not uh, have to be difficult, uh, but just don't do nothing. Uh, just please, please do something for our featured readers this evening. And since we did sh share a screen, it took my, where is my little, hmm. I don't know what happened to my little button for, I have my, oh, chat, there it is. Okay, sorry, my chat button popped in. So PayPal, I'm gonna put it in the chat for everyone, is N-A-M-U-G-E-E-R-E. -E -E. And of course, if you don't have PayPal, uh, reach out to us that the word is right. Even if you're watching this later, after tonight's event and you're like, wow, she really blew me away. I would love to tip the poet. Please do that. You can also find her at I go by Namu on Instagram. I G O B Y N A M U. It's very simple. You guys, I go by Namu uh, is her IG handle. You can also find her at Tesoto firesingers.com. Uh, firesingers 
gmail.com. Uh, so let's go. All right. Thank you all. Y'all unmute your mics one more time. Give it up for our first featured reader, Namu. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited you came to join us. So glad All right, to so going, again. going back to the open mic list, uh, we have Stacy Dyson, uh, uh, the the matriarch of our Tesoro women. I'm so excited that she is here. Uh, then we have William Washington. Oh my God! Anytime he is around, it is magic. We have Mark States, uh, one of our very own uh, garage poets. Poets is here, and then Douglas. You will um, wrap up the list. We'll see uh, where in there Jeff Taylor fits and uh, get him going uh, into the open mic list. If I missed anyone let me know i will get you added on ms dyson are you ready of course you even have to ask in honor of valentine's day take it as you like it is all so dark and dead in this house without you an incorrect silence draped like indigo moods across my life hot, sullen nights like you. But tonight it's raining and I can't let the hurt go long enough to stop my head or heart from aching. The sky shakes while I play my music to keep brave. Alicia Keys testifying on how she falls in and out of love, an option I can't even get to because my love is all that and constant while yours flies like 186,000 units of indifference and baby, just tonight, no promises. My table is scattered with roses and poetry, thorns biting my hands, salved with blood and salt water. My headache screams like the police car sirens chasing the dealers from their end of the street to the street past my door and the rain is rattling on my roof like gunfire from the streets eight blocks down and left, no, right where the crack hose and drug deals go down. But every story told in thunder tonight is your last kiss. Lightning says my prayers for me silent and alive for just a moment longer in your arms and the rain cannot stop my head drumming in time with my heartbeat because the phone is ringing and it might be you but I can't move because it's raining and I can't stop and my head hurts the phone is ringing and my head can't stop wishing for my heart to stop the pounding on my roof on my windows on my soul washing away your smell the last goodbye you gave me, your footprints on the street outside my door and the phone is ringing and the rain can't stop, I can't stop. Thunder and lightning dance together in a passion we will never know because I can't make the rain stop and you don't want to. Oh man, you guys, let's go, Stacey Tyson. Oh. One more tad bit lighter, the mm. other side of the coin. Baby, it was just supposed to be a minute. I was going to drop my digits, throw you some change for the phone, and float on. Shug, I was going to hit, quit, and forget all about you by this time next week. You were supposed to be another good looking three well, maybe four course meal. And I was going to, as they say, grit and split because I am young and hunting and have not yet bagged my limit if there is such a thing. I'm pretty boys who make me want to holler, ooh, baby, and write bad checks. I remember Luther on the CD throbbing notes like, come on, come on. And you closer and looking at me like I had no veil to hide behind and you teasing my tongue like a bad boy with a death wish. And finally, you laying me down on cool, sweet, sassy cream linen sheets and proving that all right all night is not just some idle fairy tale. I woke up at 10 on fire in lust and turned out with absolutely no regard for my personal sense of cool. 
staring deep into honey brown eyes that knew I was just aching to ache again. To a kiss that made me melt bones, quiver legs, and forget how to breathe. And there I was overnight and bam, completely shameless. Soul satisfied and done to death with absolutely no care who knew it. I had nothing to lose. Held my reputation in one hand and a shovel in the other. Dug me in as far as you could go and laid it down hot and dangerous as a woman in love. But this is not about that. This is just me telling my girls, talking some trash, bragging a little. This is me. This is me with your lips in my palm under my ear, at the base of my neck, base of my spine, trapped like a pearl in a jar of honey, baby. This was only supposed to be about a minute. But you touched me right there like that right now. And I will let you break my watch. Oh, damn, you guys, unmute your mics. Give it up for Stacey Dyson. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, that was nice. That was it's nice. almost like you're a poet laureate. I know. Isn't that odd? <laughs> if you guys are not following her, please do so. Go to firestingers.com. Uh, find out everything that we're doing at Tesoro. We are, we are a worldwide women's organization of poets and professionals. It is an incredible thing. Uh, so yes, please like, share, subscribe, follow to everyone. Let's keep this community going strong. Next up, we got William Washington. I got to like hug this man. I got to hug this man when I was hosting at the New York and Poets Cafe in New York City. Uh, he's uh, amazing. In fact, he and Mr. Speaker are going to be teaming up to do a double feature next weekend, uh, next Saturday night. And it is a very special feature i'm not going to like you know give it away uh you'll just have to be here to catch it because the two of them are teaming up and it's going to be sensational uh so mr washington sir you have the floor it, it might be a change in that um that oh. change, i'm switching up next week but anyway we're oh. going to be there all right well all let right? me know let me know what happens yes. okay yes hello today is nothing magical today i'm just going to read from my latest book the broken book love given love taken love lost Two short poems, if I may. I speak James Baldwin. I was born by the river, east of James Baldwin, west of Malcolm X, north of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., south of Mega Evers. I am standing at the cross, life given, life taken, life lost. They assassinated his brothers in the struggle, but let James live. They said, James Baldwin? Oh, don't worry, he saw. So he wrote and spoke throughout the land at home and abroad, struggling to speak through his internal pollution, a peculiar call. They said, don't worry, James won't start no revolution. He saw. I was born by the river around the corner of red, black, and green. You know what I mean? In between two flags, both red, white, and blue, one flag has 50 stars and 13 stripes. The other flag has one big star and five stripes. One flag represents a land stolen, the other flag represents a land still growing, but still not recognized as 51. To the people of Puerto Rico, another, another, another revolution is sure to come. Growing up, my breakfast was a hot bowl of Nina Simone. Lunch was a school issue tray of Shirley Chisholm, Chisholm Sonia Sanchez, Asala Shakur, and Nikki Giovanni. Dinner was a fresh part of Jane Baldwin, Leftovers was James Baldwin, James Baldwin, James Baldwin wasn't soft. James Baldwin stood by the cross, life given, life taken, life lost. I wanted to be like James Baldwin, but they said, William Washington, don't worry about him. He's an epileptic suffering from mental illness. And yes, he is the author of the widely acclaimed autobiography, The Nigger Chronicles, The Mispronunciation of Who I Am. But he can't lead a revolution. And he damn sure ain't James Baldwin. They said, don't worry about William. He's lost. That's that first selection. Thank you, guys. I'm going to read this final selection. They're all short. And this is titled Strange Fruit. 
I woke up in an alternative time past, more like the twilight zone, where black is white and white is strange fruit, where Adam and Eve cut off the serpent's head, feasted before tasting the fruits of the forbidden tree, where the red man refused the bargain and gave his and gave the black me his land. This he said will provide protect it from the white man. Where the white man was taken from his native land, Africa, enslaved by black faced Europeans, degraded, forced to pick cotton, sold his property, his woman raped, white men hung from southern trees. Strange fruit indeed. Where President Barack Obama signed the Emancipation Proclamation, three fifths freeing the white like me, and for helping me to get ahead, they shot the president dead. Peaceful white marches, white panther protests, attack dogs and hoses. How dare they kill our civil rights leader, Governor George Wallace? Shot him in the head. From this alternate, alternate library, this I read. From this alternate library, this I read. Thank you guys. I'm sorry, man. I'm having vision problems. I don't have my glasses, so I can't see a thing really. These are the special. That's okay. Thank That's so okay. Much. William Washington, you're amazing. We love you. Thank you so uh, much you. for reading. Uh, go by his book. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully you're able to come next Saturday. And if not, then we can reschedule. Uh, no, 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 but no. I I'm, I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. I don't know if we're doing that particular thing that he. Oh. oh, okay. So as long as the two of you are there, you yeah, two are I my like three. The 20 minutes. I like the 20 minutes. I, I'm being, I want my 20 minutes. I'm like, oh. I, I want my 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you and Thank speaker you. are my dirty dream. I'm just saying it. I'm not saying yeah. it. I'm just saying it. Yeah. And having the two of you featuring is my favorite thing. <laughs> so. Yeah. And I promise, I promise I won't read anything. I'll be able to see and just spit, spit right. You're, you're going to get it next week. Thank you so much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get it next week and i'm well, gonna let you give it, it to me all Thank right you. let's go uh you know you you know i'm gonna turn that into something fun all right so we're gonna bring up um uh, mark states next and then we're gonna have our second feature reader uh join us uh and that is jeff taylor i'm so excited welcome jane spoken word welcome un meshmo hitgar is in the house he has a new book out uh that is just amazing and it is so uh inexpensive that everyone needs to buy it uh to support the poets uh so i've got uh, mark and then we'll break for jeff taylor and then we have douglas robert f and jane spoken word uh un mesh if you would like to read you're more than welcome to let me know i can put you on the list all right i got you un mesh and uh, we will see as folks uh, trickle in, trickle out, and all that awesome, wonderful stuff. Uh, yes, uh, Jane says that you can use her eyes anytime, William. Uh, you use Jane's eyes and you can use mine. Well, we'll get to that next time. All right, are you ready, Mark States? Yes, I am, and thank you, Marissa. <clears throat> One poem titled Chekhov. Big table abuts big desk, creating an L-shaped barrier in an even bigger one-person office in a hallway full of such offices. Eight piles of paper on table stacked neatly in two rows of four. Check off numbers in bank statements and check off numbers in daily deposit report printouts as they are determined to match. It's Bank Reconciliations Week for my position. 40 hours of checking off at a certain rhythm, a certain pace, a certain focus of mind over anything else that matters in life. Check this, check that, check the credit card receipts because something doesn't match. Precious little adorns this office except a puppy calendar thumbtack to the wall above light switch next to door. They are big on efficiency here. If one stays focused on their tasks, there is no need to know what year it is. 
Office windows, which do not open, are covered by thick and durable slatted blinds, which seemingly have no mechanism to open them either. So if you want to observe any ruckus going on outside or whether it is snowing yet, you have to grab one slat in each hand, yank them apart, then stick your head through as if peeping Tom unmasked. The blinds are basic white a hospital cloak white, and I just bought this six-pack of crew socks from Walmart white. The blinds contrast well with the eggshell white guest chair in front of them, a plastic chair with a concave depression. Like a grumpy old alcoholic, guest chair has not seen a piece of ass for years, and why would it? No one stops by to visit or share office gossip. You see, the hallway of the accounting department is cold and silent as a morgue. As you pass a door with light extricating itself from underneath it, you know someone is in there, meticulously slicing scalpel through flesh, counting bones, measuring weight, extracting tissue samples for forensic testing. It could be your expense report on the autopsy table, your job's cadaver in a canvas bag on a gurney being wheeled away to an even colder storage locker. Walking this hallway is an ambling procession through purgatory, questioning one's ultimate fate in the off-white glare of forever. Your rapid heartbeats fill your mouth with taste of regret, and one's body sweat is a steaming bowl of New England clam chowder. And occasionally, one can hear a muffled, damn it, behind one of those closed doors, followed by a moaning file cabinet drawer, obese with the reckonings of a lifetime of actions and transactions, every moment accounted for, judged right, checked off, reconciled and initialed, then walked down the hall for superior's judgment and initials. I am a temp. None of this bothers me. Big desk, big office, a plate on the door with my name on it, Perhaps not a dream job, just a job where one may dream in peace. I miss this job. It checked off so many boxes for me. Oh, man, let's go. Oh, Mark. I love the perspective. If you all have not thought about jobs like that yeah. right will you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you can hear more from mark he's usually a mainstay at our garage poets open mics um which will be the third friday night of the month uh so yes please come back and you know i hope you come back to other open mics so we can hear more from you and we should feature you too if you're interested let us know I'd All be right. interested. Awesome. <laughs> that didn't right. take long, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me think. Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're going to bring up Jeff Taylor. He's our second featured reader this evening. I just love Jeff. Uh, when I was building The Word is Right, I was doing 100 uh, to 150 open mics a month. That is no joke. Uh, the grind was real. And one of the places I was blessed to stumble into was Garage Poets. And uh, they were just really fun, the entire group of people. And they were really welcoming of me. And they didn't care if I did erotica and talk shit. So it was great. Uh, you know, they all, even Anna, like, uh, she was so amazing. <laughs> you know, a teaser. She has such a great sense of humor. So I was like, man, this is amazing. So as we started to expand here at The Word is Right, uh, we invited Garage Poets to be a sister uh, platform, a sister organization, much like the way we work with the Bronx Art and Fun Hub and uh, Gorilla Poets. Uh, we're like, let's let's hook up with Garage Poets. And I think like we all do so much better when we're together as a community. And they, they were like, absolutely, let's go. And all of our teams just mesh. Like it's, it was like a, 
um, like the Brady Bunch <laughs> ish, you know, like, you know, all the sites kind of mushed together and really got along well. And we have very similar quirky styles of poetry. Uh, and so we're very, very blessed to have um, have Garage Poets part of um, our sister organization. And I really it's a great reason to go to Massachusetts and to go see the stuff up there because I'm in the desert in New Mexico. Uh, but we have uh, hosts who are in Florida. We have hosts who are in Texas, in New York, in uh, California. So uh, it, it's really nice now to, to be able to have people up there. So I'm going to read you uh, Jeff's bio. He, like I said, he does Garage Post the third Friday of the of the month here. Uh, he is uh, he is Jeff Taylor has been writing, publishing, and performing poetry for over 20 years. He has re recently had poets pub poems published in Ethel Zine and the anthology American Graveyard Calls to End Gun Violence, which is one of the uh, anthologies our press is putting out. Jeff lives in Massachusetts with his family where he performs with the poetry and music collective Garage Poets. Jeff has two chapbooks titled Heroes Make Better Sandwiches Than People from the 2016 Broken Pencils Press and Visitor Pass from the 2014 Broken Pencils Press. Jeff was the editor of the online publication I Can Count to Ten and previously had poems published in World Riot, Unlikely Stories, Can We Have Our Ball Back, Side Reality UK and the Poetry Tree from the UK. Jeff has performed at Boston First Night, Mass Art, Roxbury Community College, Bergen County Community College in New Jersey, the Middle, the Middle East TT, The Bears, The Cantab Lounge, Jimmy's Tingles Off Broadway Theater, AS220 in Providence, Ralph's Rock Diner in Worcester, Woodstock's Artists Association and Museum in New York, and the People's Poetry Gathering in New York City, just to name a few. I don't have your cash handles on this bio, Jeff, so you're going to have to type it in the chat, and then we're going to have to say it out loud so that people watching this can figure out a way to tip you when we are done. But in the meantime, y'all unmute your mics, give a big round of applause to our second feature reader and our fellow co-host at Word is Right, Jeff. Taylor! Thank you, Marissa. Woo! Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. happy you, you stumbled upon the Garage Poets when you did. And um, we, yeah, we definitely um, clicked our vibes, clicked right away. All, you and all the people that we had coming, we had a little, we had a little group, group of people that were coming all the time and you fit right in with all, all of those cats. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you... um stumbled upon us but uh, okay i can um so the the garage poets the next one is going to be is this coming friday and uh, we have amanda shea from boston is going to be the feature she just won the um best spoken word artist the uh, boston music awards so uh, we're excited to have her feature check out our youtube at the garage poets for um the uh, zoom information on that um, otherwise, I think I'm going to go into my into my poetry set here. I'm going to start off with a poem that um, Mar Marissa is going to be, is publishing in a in a anthology, American Graveyard. You know, you can you can pre-order yourself a copy of that now in the red or green books. You can send a copy to your senator. Make sure your senator gets that, as it's a collection of um, anti-gun violence poems. And um, we want to make sure we can get some legislation going and keep um, guns out of the hands of people that don't want to go and fire up a bunch of school kids, you know. All right, so here's this poem. It's called The Family Politics. When my dad tells me my uncle is skipping the family reunion so he can travel to a Trump rally in Pennsylvania, I think about my mom uploading official records into an internet database to prove we descended from John Adams. And it feels like we have been avoiding our family obligations. Not like we should have attended more summer barbecues, 
but like we left work unfinished somewhere along the line. Now that our courts give more protection to praying on field after high school football games than they give to choice in women's health decisions, and Congress cares more about getting likes from QAnon conspiracy theorists than they care about protecting school children from mass shooters. The significance of July 4th coming and going while we watched the January 6th hearings on TV pulls through my intestines like I'm crammed shoulder to shoulder in the back of a Ford Escape with John Adams and every other man I've been related to. Uh, on a road trip to nowhere, poorly attempting to hold in a fart laced with the odor of personal responsibility. I'm reminded of when Trump told the Proud Boys to stand back and stand by and the role that the choices my ancestors made played in getting us here in the first place. Then I try to picture what it would be like to live in a world where doves and wolves bathe each other in truth. When my wife ran for city council, the question she was asked most was who is going to watch the kids. That's family politics. Uh, yeah, you can get that in American Graveyard. Go on, check out Red or Green Books. Lots of good um, things, books, poetry you can order there. All right. So this one here is called Water Dance. And then um, I, I just rewrote the ending here right, right before the show. Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see how this goes. A maybe 12 year old girl here meticulously twisted watches me dance with my carriage while her mother loads their items onto the conveyor. When I get in, when I get into the part of my routine where I'm swinging a jug of water over my head, the girl asks, are you going to drink that whole gallon? Not all at once, I said, thinking I was clever. The girl replied, my uncle can drink an entire gallon in one sip. My uncle told me white people love Donald Trump. Do you love Donald Trump? Did you vote for him? I said, no, I can't stand that stale Cheeto. But your uncle isn't, isn't wrong. It's just I'm a socialist. When the card reader chirped a chip malfunction, the cashier chided, chided the girl's mother. You can put some of those ice creams back if you need to. The girl's mother taps her phone to the card reader. Mobile pays for their groceries before taking her daughter under her arm. When I get back home, I stand on my, my porch, listening to the results come in over the radio, challenging myself under the moonlight to drink the entire gallon of water in one slip. I didn't even make it to the top of the label before heaving all over myself. I was still mad about what they had done to Bernie, so I didn't vote. I guess that makes twice I failed in one night. That was water dance. All right, this, this next poem is called Lamp Worn. <clears throat> your next life will be the bookcase where you shelve all your previous selves. It will be easier to pick up the phone. An audacious voice will convince you Ted Tan Danson's hairpiece is an AI programmed to make all your decisions. 
In the next episode, cigarettes will taste like everybody knows your name. There are plot devices unfolding that haven't been revealed yet. In the coming episodes, memories will gurgle from the recesses of your cacophony. Your subconscious will manifest a potentiometer. Field operatives will tamper with your belongings. There is a meal set out for the crew. Box lunch and wax apples. The bathroom doors are locked. No one's sure who these freelancers are. In your next life, you will watch reruns of Cheers on your phone as you commute. The phone number will, that will conjure most like muscle memory in your next life has started seeping into the definitions of the episode you are currently living. The numbers carry within them the ability to evoke a pattern that will bounce around the trepidatious twitchings of this cartoon you seem compelled to draw yourself into. In the coming days, the dream you've been handcuffed to will show itself to be adjacent next season's intrepid jackals. In the next episode, rapid eye movement will increase. Ted Danson's hairpiece will break free of its programming. Lamp worn, shadows and glue, radiating the confused frustration of malignant singular focus, yelling, Norm, Norm, come back to your stool, Norm. You know we will find you. Thank you. That one's on lamp worn. I forgot to set my timer. So how long have I been going? Okay, so you started at 7.31. It is almost 7.41, so you have roughly 10 to 12 more minutes. All right, great. All right. Well, um, all right, this one here is called The History of Projection. And um, this one was published in the Ethelzine. The Sinclairs came about via the simultaneous vibrating of a group of 100 masked individuals collectively known as Patty and Fred. Their arrival marked what has become known as the 80s. When the Sinclairs first became noticed, they were holding record players in front of themselves, hoping to get the people more comfortable with speaking in images. The Sinclairs were deemed to be projections. The consensus was to talk about them only as possibilities. They had no speakers, making them appear silent. Patty and Fred prepared for what they called the future. Their constant vibrations gave the Sinclairs a false sense of security. The label on their spinning vinyl said, check your head. During what became known as the 90s, Patty and Fred covered thousands of pianos with mashed potatoes and gravy. Their own recipe taking great caution in how they indulge the pride they derive from their spuds until some grew to be zealots in the pride they derived from their gravy. This shift in consistency caused the mass collective to split into waves consisting of five patties and five freds bringing out about an era of phase cancellation we have learned to refer to as the aughts. During this, time, during this time, the resulting sound from the wave vibrations flipped phase with each other resulting in the Patties and Freds being unable to hear. This time alone 
provided the realization they had harbored the editing capabilities necessary to shift their vibrations milliseconds into the future. Pulling the waves just far enough apart to be heard. They would go, go on to develop what has become known as dissonance. Not being taken seriously had its advantages. Not being seen as anything more than possibilities, the Sinclairs had time to develop their projections without arousing suspicion. The Sinclairs subtly appeared in the surrounding environment by establishing themselves as minor celebrities, becoming backup singers and mayors, weathermen and third base coaches, more and more inserting what have become known as memes into the things people take for granted. The Sinclairs hone their skills, outlining the full spectrum. They met by the hundreds, convening at secret institutes, appearing to be old age homes and wind turbine factories. The Sinclairs codified their ideals, collaborating on methods of, of incorporating their projections into the hearts and minds of the people. New pages. The consensus was this was not the right time to reveal the source of the memes, the possibilities of what make them so attractive. This realization brought about what has become known as the Internet. That was a history of projection. You know. I'm sorry, just give me one second. I just got to look through my papers. All right, this poem is called Subliminal. And you can get it at um, Bomb Fire Lit. The letters on the screen are, in are inhabited by people who want to kill you. They are fluorescent bulbs trapped in the walls of a maze shaped to spell freedom. After being fed six pills every three hours for nine weeks, the letter people ate through the walls and hurled themselves into the space between the text. Their true goal is to direct, but the pharmaceutical regimen freedom has put them on, left them susceptible to believing they must be standing in a pool of your blood to make a dollar. They think love has a shape, a color, a required equipment list. A representative is asking you to lie on the couch. A profile has been created for you. You will be prompted to select a legacy administrator. Press spacebar to continue. I think that's I think that's good. I think I I think was that was that twenty minutes or did... you like... well actually no <laughs> but if you you don't have to use the full time if you don't want I I mean you you technically have like three or four more minutes more minutes but oh, if you do not right. want to no, use I... the full time you don't have to. I have one short one. You know, I think I'll end okay. with this one. 
you know, we, we used to begin things when I was a kid, you would, um, I don't know, growing up in Massachusetts anyways, everything started with the Pledge of Allegiance. So now we'll end with my version of the Pledge of Allegiance. Because like, I, I, I think to them, the Pledge of Allegiance, that made it like, that's how you knew it was like going to be a, a wholesome event or something. That's like, that's like at least the, the um, connotations I got from everybody. But nationalism is not wholesome. So, you know, this is, here's my Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the oscillating fan of America and to the corporations for which it stands, one plantation funding God, unoriginal with fragility in tear gas at the mall. Amen. Amen, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's go, you guys. Unmute your mics. Give it up for Jeff Taylor. Yo, I, I, I love his wordplay. Yeah, I'm telling you. That Thank you. It. Thank you. Love it. Wow. Right? <laughs> All right. Oh, you can catch Jeff Taylor this coming Friday night. He's got a, an amazing feature. Uh, so, and Garage Poets. Find us, follow us, like, share, subscribe, follow Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, everywhere, uh, because that is how we grow as a community, right? It's oh, not. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, yeah oh no, yeah. sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Just, I just remember on my YouTube channel, the At the Garage Poets YouTube, I just put up a video of a poem of mine um, arguing with myself over buffet sushi. It's kind of like this uh, realization, surreal universe <laughs> poem that I, I, it's, that I just I just cut a new video for that. So if you go, you can check that out on the YouTube. There's, there's a we, cool we video definitely to go need with my to bring, poem. Bring someone on board the team who is like a graphic animator who can do short films for our movie, for our poems, because that would be so dope to do like a three minute buffet argument over uh, sushi, uh, a three minute short film would be so much fun and you get <laughs> so cool. many short films right i mean yeah i mean you, you look at all of our feature readers this evening and, and well everyone who's read so far uh so many of their work could be short uh animated short right, films. totally yeah go, but right? go, go check out what i check out on on the youtube at the garage poets and on check out the new video give it a like subscribe to the channel click the bell so you get notified so when you're on youtube you'll know when um, new new content is coming out, and um, yeah, yeah, then you, you'll be able to see the shows. Maybe we could get you a book out too, so that I I can nominate it for awards. It's hard. It's hard when you're the publisher of your own book. You never get nominated for awards. So if you if you ever want to put a a, a I would love to. Let's go. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm working on on that currently. I'm getting okay. getting things what, together. What what are your cash handles? Uh, Jeff, so folks can tip you. Oh, for um PayPal, you could do um at this is Jeff Taylor, and um Venmo is um at the Garage Poets. This is Jeff Taylor for PayPal, and Venmo is this is Garage. Wait, what is uh, what just is just um just the Garage Poets? The, like at, the, at the Garage Poets. At the Garage. Okay, because I'm gonna type it out and put it in at the end. So if you um, write, uh, there, there's quite a few people in the room. If if you're so inclined, please tip the poets. Uh, two, three, four, five, a hundred, whatever you got, whatever is in your pocket, uh, put in the hat for our featured readers this evening. PayPal. This is Jeff Taylor. Uh, Venmo. The Garage Poets. Uh, I will I will definitely get that in the chat and I will update that in the Facebook um, event as well. Uh, just please don't do nothing, right? Uh, we want to continue to bring these shows. We've been doing it now. This is our third year. We're very, very excited to be bringing you new features each week uh, and, and so many shows. And I'm so excited now. I, I don't even, I lost count. I think we have 20, 22 hosts here at The Word Is Right now. <laughs> we, got, we got shows every day of the week, sometimes times twice a day so uh you you gotta just come unmesh unmesh's uh platform ought to 
be a sister platform with the word is right because it's during a time the word is right does not have an event and so it's an opportunity to continue to share uh, share those lives, share the platform, uh, spread stuff. You know, for example, we just brought on a bunch of hosts and our hosts were able to add to the email list where we have thousands with an S, thousands of uh, new email uh, lists uh, added. So it's, it's exciting to be kind of continuing to uh, work together collectively uh, so that everyone can get out there. And it's it's not so that any one platform can be the biggest, but it's so we can continue to build more platforms. Like, so if Robert F. wanted to go build a platform, and Mark States wanted to go build a platform, and Douglas wanted to go build a platform, we're here kind of supporting that venture. Uh, that way we get more stuff done. Uh, it can't all land on any one person or one place. Uh, so yeah, let's go. All right. Um, next up, speaking of Douglas, I got Douglas here. And then Robert F., Jane Spoken Word, Unmesh Mohitkar, all the way from India. Who I thought, I got to get your new book, Unmesh. And I, I'm so, you know what? We, we got to figure this out. I will totally reship you books. Uh, I don't know why to get to the first time. Uh, but we'll figure it out. And then Terry Rose Jerson will close us out for the evening unless anyone else happens to pop in between then and now all right Douglas, are you ready yep already um speaking of books that i just got i actually on a side note um i got tori lutz's new book um which is fantastic uh schoolyard crushes and prozac prescriptions I, I love it i just got it in the mail like the other day and i just like buzzed through it so it's, it's really good um, and that's from anyway, our press. Have, our she was part of the next ten. She was part of the Winter Poets that we did in 2021. She's phenomenal. Isn't that in the most amazing book? She's amazing. So yeah, I just had so, to plug to so She's good. amazing. Yeah. All right. So I have. Uh, I guess I'll do like one tonight. Um, this one's old. This one is like probably almost maybe five, maybe five to eight years old. It's called Wordsmith's Delight. What are we? Impact. Who are we? Impact. What can we do? Influence. Wordsmiths. United we stand in the face of adversity. We require no setup, no inputs, no mixtures, no faders. Heck, not even a microphone in some cases. There is no tuning that needs to be done to our vocal cords, for they are naturally elastic. I know this like another paper beats rock poem where the sole writer might praise his art ahead of all others but this ladies and gentlemen is mostly true suddenly the ground quivers and shakes there's an explosion there are witnesses standing by the roof caves in spelling devil's din wordsmiths equated with the mad scientist seminal creation minus the ha 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 Maniacal laugh that soon comes afterward. Wordsmiths, indoctrinated orators, pinning down the cosmos before Copernicus, Galileo, and Newton. We need no tools of measurement, no calculations made, freebasing words in and out, blending mixing patterns, laced in hums of breakbeats and gramophones. We've just been upgraded to MC status. Raise the roof. Wow all in the course of one poem crowd gathers we lather the butter we are organic many calls orgasmic slicing through hearts and repatching them enlivening crestfallen victims of crises attempting to dismantle establishments of power this is who we are word smiths don't stigmatize us categorize our fashions that bring you the most satisfaction in many of your days as you sit there perplexed at open mics slams festivals street corners basements off roads you can find us anywhere all over the map internationally never as blips on a radar we are mainstay chess pieces the kings and queens of wordplay the front runners of a new frontier let us mold the spider webs to bolster falling buildings that hurdle toward our conscience let us toss 
a monkey wrench into mouse traps that seek to clamp our lips shut. Let us be who we are and let fate and maximum skill allow for the rest. The ultimate test. Our creations take shape in the wee a.m. hours or late at night or mid-dream, rousing us from slumber. Gasoline dreams powered by our waking selves and vice versa in Inspiring graphic artists to practice their cursive, widening this mode of expression, standing together like a phalanx about to charge, a battle that remains ceased. Perhaps one day, poets will once again rule the day. Yes, let's go! We're gonna rule the day! Yes. Oh my God. Let's go, Douglas. Welcome, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Make sure you guys drop your social media links in the chat so y'all can follow each other. Uh, we're constantly um, evolving at Word is Right. Uh, we're finding new folks. Folks are finding us. Uh, old, uh, uh, I shouldn't say old, but past poets are coming back uh, to touch base. So you never know who you're going to meet at Word is Right. It is really, truly a melting pot of people. All right, next up, we got Robert F. talking about melting pot of people. <laughs> we got Robert F. Oh, look, he's spectacular. I love the filter. And then Jane Spoken Word, uh, you are on deck. Good evening. I'm, I'm Robert Fleming. I'm a graphic artist and writer from Delaware. And I want to start off with appreciation for uh, Jeff Taylor, who had at his garage um, poets about a month ago, a feature called Matt Wall. And he is the publisher of uh, a one page uh, poetry sheet called The Blood Rag. And after I heard Matt read, I was encouraged to submit to his magazine. And in the, the issue which just came out, there are three people who have attended Garage Poets who were included. Uh, one is uh, Rich Boucher. The other is uh, Matt Wall, who is the publisher, and myself. And I'm going to share um, my submission. It's a series of six word flash fictions. Madam Chopstick Walker trips on Kabuki. Melt Marilyn Monroe into a pizza. The Hungry Poisoner fed a pear. Praying the tea will be strong. Iron Brick to Annabelle Lee's silence, five bullets left in the barrel. My vocal cords speak for silence. And I wanna share briefly about a few um, of my upcoming uh, projects. Um, I've just joined a, and helped create a poetry collective which originated from Devil's Party Press, which is a press which was out of Milton, Delaware, which, which last year moved to California. And they traditionally were publishing novels. And this year they've chosen to publish two poetry books and four next year. And we're starting with publishing uh, a collective of poets who've been published before by Devil's Party Press. So this is the start of um, the Facebook page. Uh, not very much on it. And uh, tomorrow, um, hopefully we will have a web page, And then, uh, 
next Sunday we'll be meeting uh, to have another uh, Zoom meeting. And I'm very excited um, about this opportunity to work with Devil's Party Press. They've been uh, a great um, supporter and promoter of, of my work. And some other uh, projects that I'm uh, work, uh, working on is on February 28th through the Poetry Academy of the District of Columbia, I will be uh, one of the readers on Planet Poetry 28. I will be sharing on visual poetry, how to use white space in a poem. And then in March, I will be, uh, the, I will be readers at two uh, Delaware uh, publications. Uh, one is Delaware Bards, which will be having a book launch uh, March 15th in Dover, Delaware. And we will also be having for a publication last year called Solstice, we will be having a reading at the Milford Library. So thank you. And uh, I always uh, thank you, Marissa, for um, giving me the opportunity to connect and meet new people. And I also want, again, want to thank Jeff for helping me make the connection with Matt to get into blood rag. Awesome. Thank you so much, Robert F. And you know that Matt Wall is here at Word is Right now. So he's going to be doing the first and third Thursday night as a prequel to the New Eurekan Poets Cafe. And then our son is going to be here on the second and fourth Thursday nights as a prequel to the New Eurekan Poets Cafe. Because Ray Jane, who is also a host of Word is Right, she hosts at the New Eurekan Poets Cafe Thursday nights. So we want to make sure that anything that we host isn't conflicting with her uh, so that everyone can go to everything and, and no one feels like they have to choose. So uh, creating lots of things in places where it's it's accessible and in uh, in the timing is kept in mind is important. So Matt Wall's show will be debuting soon. You got to go check out uh, the Word is Right's Facebook page for that. And I believe we may be featuring him here also in March right here on the Double Feature Saturday nights. All right. Uh, next up is Jane Spoken Word. I'm so excited. Jane ha has hung in there and she has stayed up late uh, regardless of whatever else is going on in the world. Uh, so she's going to read follow, followed by Unmesh Mohikar and Terry Rose Jerson. And if I missed anyone, let me know. But yes, Jane Spoken Word, you the floor is all yours. Oh, thank you. And thank you, poets, for sharing your work tonight. And since it's Black History Month, which should be Black History every day, I will honor my ancestors. So I'm tired of this ages bullshit. You don't know what box I fit. You little shit looking all sideways at me, wondering who the fuck this white lady be, cracking on my not your race. You ain't never seen my Pepe's face, all dark and leathered, his history erased. War painted and standing brave from this world all the way to his grave. I'm on a vision quest to honor my war chest, celebrating all my relations with sacred incantations. I am a poet, not a blow up doll, not a picture in your pocket. I'm the examiner not a stone on your finger, not a dollar in your wallet. I'm a rhymer, I'm here to spit. You little shit, you don't know what box I fit. Give me that mic, I will spit fire. Give me that mic, I will flow bars. Give me that mic, I'll shine a light. Give me that mic, I'll take you fucking higher. You little shit. Cut the bullshit. You don't know what box I fit. I'm all about looking for the place that's it. Where complexion ain't the connection to who you think I am. I'm just a ream of paper and a burning hot fucking pen. Peace, yo. <laughs> Woo. Holy Peace, fucking girl. shit.
<laughs> I, went, I went to get the toilet paper. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Do you do you want to read another one, Jean? Oh uh, yeah, I'm sure I can no, find no, another let's go. one. <laughs> oh, all right. So let's see what I got. Uh, right. Oh, I just wrote this. Oh, wait a minute. Way to go. Way to go. Way to go. I just wrote this like two days ago. Where is it? Here it is. So it's rough format. It's going to go through a lot of changes, which my pieces always do. So it's called Stardust and Sage. Born of Stardust and Sage, conjured forth from Juju Inc. Je suis la sorcière de la lune. Forging incantations, inking voodoo. I weave time into words, straddling the precipice of light and dark. Woeful dreams bewitch my pen. Shape shifting shadows banish my forever, resurrect my ghost. As the blood moon drips crimson tears, scarring my back with dying embers, I am nothing but a dead poet in disguise wailing tragic whispers of lamentation, chasing monsters that lurk in obscure shadows where forgotten dragons are waiting to be slain. I am the echo haunting the ash heap of mine. PCO, second piece. Let's go. Oh my God, you inspire me to write about dragons. Let's go. Good, good, uh, good. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you. Oh well, God. thank you for listening. So if you guys don't know, Jane Spoken Word is going to be having a show here Tuesday, the second and fourth Tuesday night of the month. We're so excited for her. And uh, you can't even Jane, do you want to plug your show a little bit? I mean, if not, it's totally fine and they have to come. Oh, no, I and, do. Are you should okay. me? Of course I want to plug it. Every <laughs> fucking minute of every fucking day. All right. So the show is going to be really like bring it. This is going to be four poets. There's not going to be any time frame that you got five minutes to spit or three minutes or whatever. There's not going to be a prompt. It's just going to be an audience with four featured poets. And the poets are going to riff off each other's pieces. So Marissa, if you do a piece that I really dig that reminds me of one of my pieces or even a piece that I'm working on or thinking about, then I'm going to jump in on you and say, yeah, but I got this. And then somebody else is going to go, yeah, but fuck you, mine is this. So it's just going to be four poets riffing off each other um, and bringing it, just bringing it. It's going to be, you know, open your mic and testify like we're in a blues club, club drunk on whiskey and wine testify that is the best fucking word uh i think to sum up your show it's a fucking testimonial uh you you gotta have some work and if you have not done the work yet that's cool because you can sit and soak it all up and be inspired to do the work uh and then bring it to jane's show it's not like anything else that's out there on the poetry shows or on zoom or on on social media uh, and it really is going to be a fun battle but like battling is i think it's a lot of fun i'm a highly competitive person <laughs> So. Yeah, so we be jamming, baby. We be jamming. <laughs> we be jamming, right? And it's jamming with Jane Spoken Word, the second and fourth Tuesday night of the month. Uh, it's so much fucking fun. Let's go. So come uh, bring your poetry, bring your spoken word. Shit, if you don't have anything, write something and spit it. Like, <laughs> there's zero excuse why you can't come jam out uh, at that open mic. And if you're just starting out, if you're just learning, then take some fucking notes because you will learn a lot on her show. That's uh, right, but it's, one, it's, one it's note, brilliant. it's, it's brilliant. not going to be an open mic. It's just going to be an audience and four featured poets that are going to riff. And yeah, the audience can take notes and see you next week, maybe. Yeah, if you've right, got the balls exactly. to jump in. 
Yes, exactly right. So she's only taking, she's capping it each week. Uh, she's only taking so many poets. So you've got to get uh, get with her to find out how you get in, uh, get on the show. Uh, and you, if you're going to come jam, you got to jam out. Like it's straight up, where it is a no bullshit thing. Uh, she's not wasting her time <laughs> on anything. So you've got to be there to jam and jam out hard. Uh, so we're so excited to have you coming to start, Jane. All right. Uh, her poster, her event, all of that stuff is up on Facebook and Instagram. It's everywhere. Word is right is you should have zero excuse as to why you didn't know. And if you uh, don't have social media, which is completely valid, if you would like to be added to the email list, uh, we can send you the email with the monthly newsletter that says what shows are going on there. Yes, find her on Instagram, Jane Spoken Word, and her website is janespokenword.com. Uh, yes, please, let's go. Uh, this is how we all win. All right, uh, two more on the open mic list tonight. We got Unmesh Mohitkar all the way from India, and then Terry Rose Jertson, chameleon poet herself, all the way from New Jersey. All right, Unmesh, hi. I'm, I'm so, I feel so bad. Like every time on Sunday I look and I'm like, oh, damn, Unmesh's open mic looks like so much fun, and I wish I could have been there. And I, oh, I'll get back. Can come anytime, Larissa. Thanks, thanks for that. Uh, hi, I'm Unmesh, uh, and I've just published a book, Let's Unmesh Life, which is the name of my open mic as well. And it's free on Kindle. Uh, it's free on Kindle. So for next five days, it's free. So please have a copy and enjoy it. Uh, okay, here we go. I will read a few poems from my book, Almost. Almost a road ended. Almost. Flowers dried, almost fuel finished, almost water bottle empty, almost sweat dried, almost book finished, almost toast roasted, almost ghost dead. Long live the frozen dreams gliding through the dark clouds. Morning arrived smelling like fresh coffee morning arrived like fresh coffee that was the first one then uh, i got a very short one uh, fortunes misfiring spectacularly fortunes misfiring spectacularly raging fire drinking last water of drop last water drops swiftly Fortunes misfiring spectacularly, raging fire, drinking last water drops swiftly. And I will end with a shorter one once again. Sprawling thoughts. Haywire, live wire, crossfire, hellfire, ceasefire, inspire, always entangling, surrounding like barbed wire. Always entangling, surrounding like barbed wire. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Marisa. You, you are awesome. And uh, have been, we are, we are, I think we have met for uh, two years back or something. And uh, it's at, brilliant. At least like two, two and a half years ago. But I swear to God, <clears throat> you're the only man who makes bed bugs and barbed wire sound pleasurable. <laughs> the barbed wire! You know, it's like, I'm like, wrap me up in it like a warm blanket. And I'm like, wait, it's barbed wire, but Unmesh makes it sound amazing. <laughs> oh, I love it. And if you guys have not heard his fucking bed bugs poem, please do. Unmesh, record that. Put that out there. It should go viral. Not because we're bringing about awareness for bed bugs, because we're not. But it's because it's one of those poems that makes you feel something like physically you become ailed <laughs> but in the best way uh that's what poetry if if someone's words can make your skin feel a certain way or, or make you smell something or you know become aroused if it's erotica right uh whatever it is uh, the poem the word the the um the the speaker the poet if they can do that and evoke that emotional response in you i think that that is such a special gift and Unesh has that very, very special gift. So thank you so much. I want to go sleep in Barbara now. <laughs>
not really, not really, but Umesh makes it sound wonderful. All right, uh, if you uh, ha have not followed Unmesh Mohikar, please do so. He does an incredible open mic every, well, it's Saturday morning. It's 8.30 my time, which is 10.30 or 11 10 Eastern. 10.30 Eastern. Um, there's it, it changes with the time when we when we have daylight saving time it it changes a little bit uh so it'll go earlier i think in the summer and later in the winter but anyways um uh, let's do mesh life is on facebook instagram it's everywhere and please get his book look y'all it's a fucking dollar 20 on kindle and four dollars on paperback he's not even our feature right now but i'm like come on like y'all can go do that support it's Find it's him free on, now on kindle marisa oh, <laughs> now on i thought you said that but then it says a dollar 20 in what you dropped in the chat so yeah and link tree if you're on link tree unmesh mohitkar m-o-h-i-t-k-a-r please go do that uh, it's so much fun. And join, join Unmesh and all of us early Saturday mornings. Uh, we can have our coffee. Uh, smells like fresh coffee uh, on that Saturday morning. It's his nighttime, of course. And now it's our night and his morning. So um, yeah, Folgers in my cup. All right, Terry Rose Jerson, are you ready to wrap us up tonight? Let's see if she's, if she's here. Yes. yes, there she is, the chameleon poet herself. I have two anti-love pieces tonight, which I know you're going to love. I wrote this today. Both of these are new shit. I wrote them today. First one, Victor. Well, the day has come to be immortalized in poetry, although who is to say if I think you deserve it? Someone who I never thought I would get over yet, somehow, perhaps through your lack of caring, I eventually, after long heated nights of sex with strangers, did. You being careless with my heart and your infidelity mean little to me now. As a matter of fact, when you drove by that day in your car, I tried to hide from you. That's how much I did not want you to see me. You look the same with a wonderment on your face that face that I used to fantasize about daily and drive to for our careless afternoons, discovering the meaning of physical satisfaction, but at leaving mentally tormented. I wrote all my feelings for you in notes left on your car windshield when it ended. I had hoped that one day you would change your mind, but you didn't. And the last time I locked eyes with yours, I felt nothing. I could not take back history. That's that one. And I have this second piece. The promise of love and living happily ever after is a premise that is as impossible as it is ridiculous. Of course, we will be unhappy. It is always the other side of the shiny new coin that will inevitably tarnish through the constant forces of saltiness and careless handling by so many people. Well-meaning, of course, always well-meaning. And what are we to do now that we have realized that this is the in inevitable end? Hopelessly try again? or give up on the idea entirely and resign ourselves to the fact that we were conquered by this idiotic idea of love. Taken in once again by the ingenious marketing minds of Hallmark, my logical mind knows this is the case of wanting utopia. They know what we want, so I will force myself to go out and spend my last dollar to honor this stupid holiday where we're supposed where we're expected to show our appreciation, our appreciation for the tender-hearted companion or family members. We must show them our love. We will force the candy, the cards. We must show we care. We will not be denied. They will reciprocate and in turn will not be denied. To deny this is to, to deny everything. <laughs> I messed up the ending, but you get the you get the idea. 
Let's go, Terry Rose. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, it's just a want a utopia. Yes. Oh my goodness. Let's go. I if if you're if you see the beautiful image behind her, that is the cover for her book. Uh, Chameleon Chronicles, <laughs> Words Never Spoken. It, it's a beautiful book. And it is full of her artwork as well. It's bound poems, black up poems, white up poems, her photographs. Like it's it's not just poetry. It's a lot of her artwork as well as in that book. It is such a gorgeous book. Uh, you can order it from her. She'll send you a signed copy. Uh, yeah, please do so. If you, if you don't know what to give the person in your life and they probably happen to be female. Uh, her book would be a great, it, it, as an adult gift, it would be a wonderful gift. Uh, it is, it's truly, so I, I think like Generalissimo's, like the gift to give your, it, you know, yours and Generalissimo's books are like the gifts to give people that you don't know what to give them. Uh, truly, because they're funny and they're witty and they're just so funny freaking different than anything that's out there uh i just absolutely love it so yeah thank you <laughs> if anybody All wants right. to contact me wait i wanted to give my the way to yeah. contact me is Teresa rose jertson on facebook and um I, I could change my my handle on ig from i funny's mom to the chameleon poetic because ig likes to do some strange things with my accounts when they get up in numbers and I don't think that's an accident. <laughs> right? Instagram likes to, to mess things up. Yeah. But I am super excited to, um, you know, reiterate that Terry Rose Jerson is going to be doing the last Saturday of the month karaoke night here at Word is Right starting in April. Yo! So we're so excited to have Terry Rose be part of our Word is Right family and to have karaoke because for so long we've been doing karaoke at the New York and Post Cafe online and they're shutting that down. It's no longer going to be available. So what the hell do the rest of us do uh, who want to sing and hang out together in the comfort of our own home? Well, we we just bring it to the Word is Right. And, we and you know what, Terry Rose, you won't have to wait so damn long to sing, <laughs> which I'm so excited excited about oh my god she used to wait hours you guys hours to sing uh so now she's gonna be uh you know excellent uh hands on the button uh to be able to do to do the music that she wants the way she wants it so i'm very excited for that all right so just to reiterate uh namu's paypal is uh n-a-m-u-g-e-e-r-e and uh, Jeff Taylor's PayPal is, this is Jeff Taylor. His Venmo is the Garage Poets. If you do not have PayPal or Venmo, reach out to us at The Word is Right. Uh, we have Cash App, uh, Carrier Pigeon Firstborn, US Mail, <laughs> whatever. There's zero excuse uh, why you can't uh, tip the feature readers this evening. So please, please let us know. And we can do that for you. Uh, all right. So this comes to the end of the show. Next Saturday, like I said, we have uh, William Washington and Mr. Speaker are going to be here. So I'm very excited. And then the last Saturday of the month, we have Mike K. Nichelle, Kendra, and Gifted. Those two women are just fire. So I'm excited. You got you got men fire and then women fire to finish up the month of February. We're so excited uh, to be having them. We're booked right now into April. So lots and lots of things are, are happening uh, for the word is right. Thank you all so much for being here. Are we ready for our toast to bid everyone a good evening? All right, grab your glass, um, grab your hand, grab your dildo, whatever it is you happen to have near you. And uh, yeah, okay, Mark's got an empty gallon. We don't know what, but all right. Uh, here's to health in your company and one for the lasses. Let's drink and be merry, all of our glasses. Let's drink and be merry, bad thoughts to refrain. For we may or may not ever all be here again. This has been the Word is Right Saturday Night Double Feature featuring Jeff Taylor Namu. I'm your host, Marissa Prada. I'll see you all post next time. Peace and blessings. Bye. <laughs>